Okay, so now that you've been using R for a week and a half or so, and you have been making plots, and you've been running code, and you've been seeing errors in code, and asking me for help on Slack and through email, which is great. You should continue to do that. Um, that's going to be the most helpful way of getting help from, um, from me and from your classmates. Keep asking questions. Um, the process you're going through is totally normal. Um, it's a steep learning curve initially to figure out what to even type and where to put files. But then once you start getting error messages, it's also a steep learning curve how to actually interpret those, those error messages and, and understand what they mean and how to fix them. Um, and one, one good strategy for fixing issues when you run into them is to create something called a reproducible example and to rely heavily on Google and other people. It is 100% OK to Google things. Um, and to look in the documentation and look in the help files for different functions. It is, everybody does this. Um, this is a tweet from a guy a year and a half ago. He's a data scientist that has worked at a whole bunch of big uh, technology companies. Um, and he mentioned here that like he can't write two lines of code without referring to Google or Stack Overflow. He would be lost without them. Um, this is also true for me. Um, I'm good at doing like basic ggplot things. I've been doing ggplot for years now, and so I can add like, I can do scale x continuous, I can turn off legends, I can do basic stuff. But if I have to like rotate the labels in the y axis, I can never remember how to do that. It's element text, something in element text, and so I will Google it. Um, if I want to learn how to, or if I can't remember how to change the caption font and make it italic, I can't remember how to do that. It's again something in element text but I can never remember the name for it. And so I go look at the documentation for element text because that's how I remember. Um, there, it's impossible to know everything. So don't feel bad um, looking stuff up. In the past, I've had students confess to me that they had to Google something and they found an answer on Stack Overflow and they used some of the code there. And that's fine. They felt bad for it. Don't feel bad. Like Use the code that's out on the internet. Adapt stuff. Um, look at the help file, Google stuff, talk to people. That's the only way you're going to do this. That's what everybody does. Like the best data scientists at Google and Facebook and Twitter and stuff, they Google stuff all the time. So Google stuff, it's okay. Um, the second part of this is when you're trying to figure out what goes wrong with your stuff um, and you're trying to ask for help, the best way to do this is to help the person that you're asking help from. Um, if you're going to post a question on Stack Overflow or on the RStudio community forums or on Slack um, for our class, um, you're not going to want to just say, I have this issue, what's wrong? Um, if you look at this, if you bake a cake that looks like this, you're not going to just say, help, my cake broke, period, fix it, what went wrong? Nobody's going to know exactly what went wrong looking at that unless you're like a super professional baker that's on the Great British Bake Off or something and they know that you had one tablespoon less of baking soda or something. Um, nobody's going to know what went wrong there. So instead of saying, help, my cake broke, fix it. Um, if you say, help, I followed these six steps and then my cake broke, the person you're asking, um, whether it's somebody on a random forum or me in email or one of your classmates, they can then reproduce that same sequence of steps and they can figure out what went wrong. And the same principle applies to code. Um, what you can do is when you run into an error, if you can't figure out what the error is and it's really cryptic, one of the best ways to fix this is to create what is called a reproducible example or a reprex is the, the official acronym or the official nickname that the, the R community uses for this. And what a reprex is, is, it's just something that somebody can run on their computer to reproduce the problem you're facing. And what this forces you to do is to think about kind of the very simplest version of your problem. Um, often people won't have the same data that you're working with. Um, if you're downloading a data set and it's loading just fine, but then you can't plot it because it's showing some error, what you can then do is switch to a different data set that's one of the built-in ones. The reason we keep using like the MPG data set or Gapminder is because anybody, if they just open R, and use those data sets. They don't have to download a CSV file from somewhere on the internet and then load it. Um, they can kind of run the same code you're running a lot faster because the data exists. And so you want to think about what other people have on their computers and kind of simplify it down to something that other people can run. So the general process for this is if you're running into to issues, 
um, you'll want to simplify your code down to something very basic. Um, so a few of you had issues with um, exercise five, where you had to make an ugly plot. Um, and you ended up using ggtheme assist and you went through and went in the menu and changed colors and made it look really ugly and it generated a massive chunk of code for you. And then some of you got errors. And the tricky part with that is there was an error somewhere in that massive chunk of theme things. Um, and so it's really hard to find that. And so the strategy there is simplify it down. Um, what you can do is just start with your very basic plot, add one theme thing and run it and see if it works. And then add another theme thing and see if that works. And then add three more and see if that works. And you add different adjustments until something breaks and then you find what broke. And if you make it to the very end and nothing broke, then you fixed it somehow. Sometimes things just fix because you were missing a comma or something. And by re kind of rebuilding the code line by line, you're going to take care of those comma issues and the plus issues and other things. And so kind of a good strategy here is simplify it down to something very, very basic and then add things slowly until something breaks. And then once something breaks, you know why it is breaking. Um, another thing you can do is use a subset of your data or invent fake data. Um, so using a subset, like if you're using the Gapminder data and something's not working, but you're dealing with like 100 different rows, you could just use a filter function and filter so you're only looking at like the Americas or only looking at Europe because there are fewer countries there. And then you can focus on trying to fix stuff with just Europe and then you can add everything back in. Um, this gets especially important when you're trying to like group by lots of different things. Like if you're trying to group by 180 different countries, you're going to get a massive data set back and it's going to be hard to see if anything went wrong. And so one good thing you can do is just look at like six countries and make sure your group by and summarize thing works. And then if it does, put the rest of the countries back in and then it should work. Um, another very important thing you can do is restart your R session. Um, this is what happens when you knit. When you knit, you start with a brand new R session with no objects in it, no data in it, no libraries loaded. And so often you'll be working in R Studio and you'll be getting plots and they're working and then when you knit, nothing works. And that's because you likely have something in your R Studio session that you created at some point. Um, you made a new variable, you loaded the data and filtered it, but then you deleted the code that did that or things are in the wrong order. And so what you can do is if you, in R Studio, you can go up to session up at the top menu and then say restart R, it will clear out all your intermediate variables, it'll unload all of your libraries and let you start back from the beginning and you can start working through your code. And you can see where stuff breaks again. And so again, the main philosophy here is start from kind of a very basic foundation and start adding stuff until it breaks and then you'll figure out what's wrong. Um, this invent fake data idea. Um, one thing you can do is if you just want to show like a bar plot with different categories, instead of trying to find a data set like the MPG data set and then doing group by and summarize to get counts, you can just create a mini data set that has counts built into it and then plot that. Um, and then later you can switch it out for a real data set. But if you're just trying to explain something to somebody or help somebody with something, um, then having kind of a smaller, tiny data set that's quick to make is, is a good strategy. Um, then finally, you can ask the internet or ask other people for help using your toy example that is very isolated and small that they can run on their computer or they can kind of better understand and it's not super complicated with all of your specific variables that you're working with. Um, most of the time, if you do these things, it will clear up the error message for you. Um, um, and it will, you'll find out what's wrong just because you're making this reproducible example. Um, I have very often run into an issue and I can't figure out what's going on. And so then I'll go to Stack Overflow and open up a new question and start typing what's wrong. And on Stack Overflow, if you don't Im include a reproducible example, the commenters will yell at you and say, include a reproducible example so we can figure out what's going on. And so as I'm writing my question, I have R open, I'm making a smaller reproducible example to figure out how to explain why everything's broken. And as I'm doing that, I figure out what was broken. And then I close the tab in, R in Stack Overflow and never ask the question. Um, and that's a very common thing. So, but that, that's good. Like I fixed the problem by myself and nobody yelled at me for asking a dumb question because I figured it out. 
Um, so that's like that's a normal strategy there. And so that's that's something you should try as we go throughout the semester here is when you run into an issue, simplify it down as much as you can and then add little bits until something breaks. And if nothing breaks, or if, if you're adding stuff and it's still not working, then start using different types of data. Use a toy data set and see what that does. Um, and you can do lots of this work to help you learn better. Um, so a quick example of this is if we look um, right here, let's say um, you're trying to make a column chart and you don't want to, to find a data set to figure out four exact categories. For instance, you're using the Gapminder data set and you've gotten rid of Oceania, so you're left with four continents and you want to plot those in a column chart or something. Um, you could have somebody download the Gapminder data set, but then you'll have to have them run all of the code that will then filter Oceania out and then group by and then summarize and then like create the data set that you're working with. Another thing you can do is just create your own mini data set with like fake data that you can then use. Um, one easy way to do this is with this function called Tribble, um, which is very similar to Tibble. We've seen that before. That's what let you. That's what lets you make data sets. Um, Tribble lets you make data sets too, but it makes you. Uh, it lets you make data sets by row. That's what the R stands for here. Is row based tibbles. They just made it kind of this pun nerdy version of Tribble. And so the way Tribble works here is the first line that you feed it is the column names. And you have to preface the column names with this tilde thing. So you say, here's a column called animal and a column called number. And here's four different animals and their numbers. And the nice thing about this is this looks like a spreadsheet. Um, this looks like something you could type in Excel. Another thing you can do is you can actually literally type stuff in Excel, save it as a CSV file, and then load it. Um, the issue with that is if you're asking for help, you then have to send the code, which you can copy and paste and send through text or send through Slack or whatever. Um, but then you also have to send the CSV file along with it, which is extra work for whoever's helping or trying to answer the question. So if you do something like this, creating that data set is built right into the code. And so you end up with a data set that looks like this. This my data is just a data frame um, with these four categories and these numbers here. And so what you can do is you can ask a question like this. This is something that's a typical thing that you'd see on like our studio community or Stack Overflow, where somebody would say, I want to remove the fill legend in this chart because um, I have fill on the x-axis and I want to get rid of the legend because I don't need that. Um, here's kind of an example data set. Here's the, the code I have for making the plot with using the fake data, x is animal, y is number, fill is animal. I have columns, but then the question is, I add something here, but what? And so then the person who's helping, all they have to do is select this, paste that into R, and they run it, and then they have my data, and they can start tinkering with the code, and it's really fast for them to do that. Um, so this is kind of like best practice way of getting help is creating reproducible examples, um, because one, it helps the person that you're asking, or the internet, um, because they can quickly figure out what the problem is. And two, often you'll figure out the problem as you're creating these things. And so that's kind of some general strategies for debugging R and figuring out error messages when you run into them. So good luck with that. On the, on the content page for, or on the, the class page for today, I will put some links to um, some resources that further explain kind of good practices for reproducible examples and the best ways to make them. And um, there's a whole bunch of resources out there helping people learn the best ways to ask questions. Um, and the best, the best superpower to have with R is not memorizing every function. It's not knowing every single detail of ggplot. It's really just knowing how to Google stuff and knowing how to make reproducible examples of weird issues and fixing them that way. Um, that is the greatest superpower of learning R. If you can figure that out, you can do anything else in R. So good luck with that.